Let us summarize what we've done so far in this chapter. And then from there on, I would like to use this to introduce the general gas equation. So first of all, with Boyle's law, we looked at the relationship between volume and pressure. And we saw that volume is indirectly proportional to pressure. And that's when the amount of moles were kept constant. And it was also at a constant temperature. Then with Charles' law, we looked at the relationship between volume and temperature and saw that volume is directly proportional to temperature. And we did those experiments where we had a constant pressure and a constant amount of moles. And then gay lussacs law is similar to Charles' law except he compares pressure with temperature and saw that pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. And this was done when the volume and the amount of moles were kept constant. And lastly, Avogadro's law, and we saw that the volume is directly proportional to the amount of moles, and that was also done while the pressure was kept constant and kept at a constant temperature. Okay, so this then leads us to a single equation called the general gas equation. Because we have various equations here, but the idea is to have something that is practical that you can use under all circumstances. And again, this is used when the amount of moles remains constant. So P1 times V1 divided by... T1 is equal to P2 times V2 divided by T2. So this is a combination between Boyle's law, Charles' law, and gay lussacs law. Uh, and then the amount of moles remain constant. So a typical question uh, will look like, uh, I'll explain one now. When we do calculations with this, remember your temperature has to be in Kelvin. That's a very first step. You always do that. You first convert the temperature into Kelvin. Then you need to make sure that the units of the two pressures are the same and the units of the two volumes are the same. So let's do an example calculation. I'm taking this example from the uh, study and master textbook, Grade 11 Physical Sciences, and this is the example they use on page 172 in their textbook. So let me quickly read through. It says 25 cubic centimeters nitrogen gas is at a temperature of negative 23 degrees Celsius. And a pressure of 200 kilopascals. So let's write down our first scenario. So we have our initial volume as 25 cubic centimeters. Our initial temperature is negative 23 degrees Celsius. And again, immediately convert the negative 23 into Kelvin by adding 273, and this will become 250 Kelvin. Do that immediately, otherwise you get it. Then the pressure, as stated, is 200 kilopascal. Okay, so now the ask us to calculate the volume of the gas. If the temperature is increased to 67 degrees Celsius and the pressure decreased to 80 kilopascal. So now they want us to calculate the volume. So V2 is unknown. T2 is 67 degrees Celsius and again we immediately going to convert that into Kelvin and if you add 2, 
273, you get 340 Kelvin. And the pressure was decreased to 80 kilopascal. So now we're in a position where we can actually solve this. So V2 is our only unknown. So we are going to work with the general gas equation now. So you write down the equation first. So that's the very first step. And then from there on you substitute what you have. And please take note. Are the units the same? Kilopascal, kilopascal, yes. Kelvin, Kelvin, yes. Volume, cubic centimeters. That means our answer will be in cubic centimeters as well. <clears throat> okay, so... Uh, after writing the first step, then it's 200, it's V1, V1 is 25, T1 is 250, P2 is 80, V2 is our unknown that we want to calculate, and T2 is 340. And then from here on, we can simplify and calculate. Okay, so let's complete this calculation. So it will be 200 times 25 times 340 divided by 250 and then divided by 80. Uh, we just like to write this step down so that everybody can see what exactly happens mathematically speaking. This will become 250 and 80 and all of this equal to V2 and if our calculations are correct V2 will be equal to 850 cubic centimeters. This is a powerful tool because now we can compare different properties at the same time. As you remember from this question's uh, statement, the temperature increased but the pressure decreased. So now what happens to the volume? So intuitively it would be difficult now to calculate it um, precisely. But by using this equation, the general gas equation, it's really easy to do the calculation.